Hello, everybody. So we're going to continue with Module 13, Lesson 3, Solving Area Equations. We're on page 385 of the 6th grade Go Math Middle School textbook. And our essential question today that we should be able to explain is, how do you use equations to solve problems about area of rectangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, and triangles? Okay, well, we've learned the equations for those four shapes. So let's go ahead and look at these. So problem solving using the area of a triangle. So recall that the formula for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. And you can also use the formula to find missing dimensions if you know the area and one dimension. In other words, if we have the area and they tell us the height, well, we can solve for the base. If they give us the area and they give us the base, we can solve for the height. So, all right, example one. After winning the state tournament, the wrestling team hangs a pennant shaped like a triangle on the gym wall. The base of the triangle is one and a half feet long. It has an area of two and 25 hundredths square feet. What is the height of the triangle? So start with the formula, plug in the dimensions that are known. Well, in this case, we know the area. We also know the base. So we have to solve for the height. So we have 200, two and 25 hundredths equals 75 hundredths. Why 75 hundredths? Because half of one and five tenths is 75 hundredths. So we notice that 75 hundredths is multiplied by the h, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 75 hundredths. And if we divide both sides, we get an answer of 3. So the height of the triangle is 3 feet. All right, so let's try one ourselves. So it says here, Renee is sewing, <clears throat> Renee is sewing a quilt whose pattern contains right triangles. Each piece, each quilt piece is a right triangle with a height of six inches and an area of 24 square inches. How long is the base of each quilt piece? So again, we're gonna start with our area. Okay, so that's our formula, one half the base times the height. They tell us the area is 24. And they told me the height is 6. So when we're looking at this, we need to solve for the base, right? So I'm going to rearrange the multiplication problem on the right-hand side by using the commutative property of multiplication. And I'm going to take half of 6. Half of 6 is 3. So we have 3 times the base equals 24. Since we're multiplying the variable by 3, we're going to divide both sides by 3. And so we get a base of 8. So we have 8 inches for the base. Let's look at number 2. I mean, um, example 2. So how about writing equations using the area of a trapezoid? So we can use the formula for the area of a trapezoid to write an equation to solve a problem. All right, so here's example two. A garden in the shape of a trapezoid has an area of 44 and 4 tenth square meters. One base is 4 and 3 tenths meters long, and the other base is 10 and 5 tenths meters long. The height of the trapezoid is the width of the garden. How wide is the garden? We'll start with the area formula for tra trapezoid, which is one half the height of the trapezoid times the sum of base one and base two. Substitute the known values or known dimensions. They gave us the area of 44 and 4 tenths. They gave me base one and base two of 4 and 3 tenths and 10 and a half. We're going to add what's in the parentheses first, and that gives us 14 and 8 tenths. I would rearrange that, so I multiply half times 14.8, and I'd get 7 and 4 tenths. 7 and 4 tenths is multiplied by the variable, so divide both sides of the equation by 7.4. 
and we come up with six. So the garden is six meters wide. All right, so explain why the first step after substituting is addition. Why did we add here first? Well, that's our order of operations, right? So the order of operation just says basically we have to do whatever's in the parentheses first. All right, three. So the cross section of a water trough is shaped like a trapezoid. The bases of the trapezoid are 18 feet and eight feet long. It has an area of 52 square feet. What is the height of the cross section? So we're gonna start with the formula for a trapezoid. One half the height of the trapezoid times the sum of base one plus base two. Substitute what is known. They gave us the area. They did not give us the height, but we do know the bases. Okay. So we know one half the height times the sum of the eight of the bases. Do it's in parentheses first. We have 26. I'm going to rearrange that using the community property multiplication. Half of 26 is 13. So we get 13 times something is 52. We're going to divide both sides by 13 to isolate the H. And 52 divided by 13 should be four. Four times three is 12. Four times one is five. So four. So the height is four feet. Okay. <clears throat> now let's look at number th or the next page, page 387. Solving multi-step problems. So you can write and solve equations that represent real-world problems related to relationships in geometry. So example three. John and Mary are using rolls of fabric to make a rectangular stage curtain for the class play. The rectangular piece of fabric on each roll measures two and a half by 15 feet. If the area of the curtain is 200 square feet, What's the least number of rolls they need? All right, so let's rewrite the question as a statement. It's basically saying, find the least number of rolls of fabric needed to cover an area of 200 square feet. What's the important information? We need to know that each roll is two and a half by 15 feet. And that the area of the total, the total area of the curtain that they need is 200 square feet. So write an equation to solve for the area of each roll of fabric and then you're going to use the area of the curtain and the area of each roll to write an equation to find the least number of rolls. All right, so the area formula, we would say length times width, right? So each roll of fabric is 15 times 2.5, which would be 37.5 square feet. We're now going to use that 37.5 square foot to find how many rolls we would need. Well, we'd come up with n equals 5 and 1 thirds. Uh, you're not going to buy a third of a roll. So how many rolls do they need? They need six. And we can check that if, if we desire. We can say, all right, well, 38 square feet, that's 37 and a half is close to 38. 38 times six is 228 square feet. Well, that's more than 200, so that's a reasonable answer. All right, so let's look at one for us to practice. A parallelogram shaped field in a park needs sod. The parallelogram has a base of 21 and a half meters and a height of 18 meters. 
The sod is sold in pallets of 50 square meters. How many pallets of sod are needed to fill the field? All right, so. <clears throat> So we have to figure out the area of the field. Okay, so that's it's a parallelogram, so base times height. We have to figure out the area. They didn't give us the area. They gave us a base of 21 and a half meters, and they gave us a height of 18. So we have 21 and a half times 18. All right, so I came up with an area of 3,870 meters squared. Now they sell the sod in 50 square meter pallets. So we're going to divide 3,870 by 50. Well, I know that if the dividend and the divisor both end in zero, I can divide both of those numbers by 10. Okay, and that leaves me 387 divided by 5. Well, 38 divided by 5, that's going to be 7, right? With a remainder of 3, which I can't share with 5 groups. I'm going to bring down the 7. So I have 37 ones divided by 5. That's going to be 7. And we have a remainder of two, so 77 and two-fifths pallets. I, I just noticed I made a mistake somewhere. Maybe you guys probably caught it already. I was multiplying by 21 and a half here. Not 215. So this should be 387. So 387 divide by 50. So it's going to change my answer a bit, right? So we'd have 37, I'm sorry, 7 and 37 fiftieths pallets. Well, you're not going to buy 37 fiftieths of a pallet. So we're going to need 8 pallets. All right, let's do some more practice. Number one, a triangular bandana has an area of 70 square inches. The height of the triangle is 8 and 3 fourth inches. We need to write and solve an equation to find the length. So start with the formula for triangle. Which we know is 1 half the base times the height. In the problem, we were given the area. And they also told us the height. So we have to solve for the base. <clears throat> eight and three fourths is the same as eight and seventy five hundredths times the base. Half of eight. 
is 4.375, and that's going to be equal to 70. So we know that we're multiplying by the variable, so we're going to divide both sides by 4 and 375 thousandths. Okay, we're going to move the decimal point three places to the right by multiplying by a thousand. And we're going to do the same thing to the dividend. 4,375 can be taken from 7,000 one time. It leaves us 2,625. We're going to bring down the one. And how many 4,375 can we take from 26,250? Um, well, 6 times 4 is 24. I'm going to try 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Let's see. All right, so 6. 16. So our height in number one is 16 inches. I'm sorry, the base is 16 inches. Okay, number two, the top of a desk is shaped like a trapezoid. The bases of the trapezoid are 26 and a half meter, centimeters and 30 centimeters long. The area of the desk is 791 square centimeters. The height of the trapezoid is the width of the desk. Write and solve an equation to find the width of the desk. So start with the area formula for trapezoid. And substitute the known values. So we don't know the height, but we do know the area. 791 square centimeters. And we do know the bases, 26 and a half and 30 centimeters. So we have right now, we have half the height times 56 and a half equals 790 square centimeters. I'm going to use the commutative property of multiplication to switch places with the 56 and a half and the H. Half of 56 and a half. Half of 56 and a half is the same as dividing by two. Which would give us 28 and one fourth or 28 and 25 hundredths equals 791. Divide both sides by 28 and 25 hundredths. That's going to isolate the H. The opposite of multiplication is division. To make 28 and 25 hundredths into a whole number, we're going to multiply by 100. And we're also going to multiply the dividend by 100. Okay, so we have to move the decimal point two places to the right in the dividend. All right, so we have 79,100 divided by 2,825. All right, so 3 times 30, that's 90. It's probably 2. I'm going to try 2. 28. 25 times 2, 5,650, leaves me 2,260, bring down the zero. How many <clears throat> 28, 25s can you take from 22,600? I 
if we think of this as 3,000, it would be about 7. I'm going to try 7. Nineteen seventy five. Oh, I noticed that when I subtract that, I get the same number as the divisor. So seven is one too small. So I'm going to use eight. And so eight times twenty five, twenty eight times twenty eight, twenty five is twenty two thousand six hundred. Subtract that, it's going to give me zero. So 28. So our height of or the width of the desk is 28 centimeters. Okay, number three. <clears throat> Taylor wants to paint his rectangular deck. That is 42 feet long and 28 feet wide. A gallon of paint covers about 350 square feet. How many gallons of paint will Taylor need to cover the entire deck? All right. So what do we need to do first? Well, we need to find out the area of the deck. So what is that equation? Well, it's a rectangle. So we're going to use area equals length times width. So area equals 42 times 28. Then we're going to write and solve an equation to find the number of gallons of paint. So let's figure out the area first of the deck. So we have 1,176 square feet divided by 350 square feet. So every gallon of paint will cover 350 square feet, and we need to cover 1,176 square feet. So how many gallons of paint do we need? Um, I'm going to try three, because 350, we can think of that as between 300 and 400. Three times 300 is 900. Three times 400 is 1,200. So three would probably work. with a remainder of 126. Well, if there's a remainder, right, and we've got three full gallons, don't I need to buy one more gallon of paint? Because if I don't, I'm gonna have this portion of the deck that's still uncovered. So I'm gonna need four gallons of paint. All right, number four. How do you use equations to solve problems about area of rectangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, and triangles? Well, use the formula. Formula for the shapes. Substitute the known dimensions So substitute the known values, solve the equations for the area or the missing dimension of the figure. Okay. 
right, let's continue with independent practice on page 389. So on 389, we have a window that's shaped like a parallelogram. And it has an area of 18 and one third square feet. The height of the window is three and one third feet. How long is the base of the window? Okay, so parallelogram. So we're gonna start with that formula, which is simply base times height. They told us the area is 18 and one third square feet. They didn't give us the base, but they did give us the height. The height is three and one third feet. So I'm gonna change these into fractions that are greater than one by multiplying the denominator by the whole number. 18 times three is 54 plus one is 55 thirds square feet. I'm going to do the same thing to the height. The denominator times the whole number gives me 9 plus 1 is 10 thirds. So I see that the fraction is multiplied by the base. I, 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 the opposite would be divide, right? Well, dividing 10 thirds is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 tenths. All right, so that's going to leave me B, or the base. And here, I see that both of those threes, they they're kind of cancel each other out, right? And 55 over 10. Okay, well, that's how many 10s can go into 55? 5. 5 times 10 is 50, with a remainder of 5. So 5 and 5 tenths, which is the same as 5 and a half. So the height, the base of the window is five and a half feet. All right, number six, a triangular cell has a base length of two and a half meters. The area of the cell is three and three fourths square meters. How tall is the cell? All right. So what's, we have to find or use the formula for triangular cell, which would be one half base times the height. So what dimensions were given in this? They told us the base was two and a half. And they also told us the area. And we have to solve for the height. All right, well, <clears throat> half of two and five tenths. In my head, I'm thinking that as $2.50. If you tell me half of $2.50, I know that that's one twenty-five. So one in 25 hundredths is half of two and five tenths. Times H is three and 75 hundredth meters squared. We're multiplying this by the variable, so let's divide both sides by 1 and 25 hundredths. Multiply the divisor and the dividend by 100. This means we can move the decimal point two places to the right. How many hundreds and 25s fit in 375? It should be 3. Yep. Okay, so 3 times 125 is 375 with nothing left over. So 3. So the height of our sail is 3 meters. Okay. Number 7. A section in a stained glass window is shaped like a trapezoid. 
The top base is four centimeters and the bottom base is two and a half centimeters. If the area of the section of the glass is three and nine tenths square of centimeters, how tall is the section? All right, so area of a trapezoid. You know, a trapezoid is going to be half the height times the sum of the two bases. All right, they gave us a top base, a bottom base, and an area. So let's substitute those known values. Okay, so that's what we know. So we're basically solving for H, correct? All right, so three and nine tenths equals half the height times the sum of four and two and five tenths, which is six and a half. I'm gonna use commuter property of multiplication to rearrange those. Half of $6.50 is how I'm seeing this in my head, six and five tenths. I'm seeing that as the same as $6.50, which would be $3.25, or three and 25 hundredths times H. Okay, we're multiplying the variable by three and 25 hundredths. So I need to divide both sides by three and 25 hundredths. Okay. This time I'm going to multiply the divisor and the dividend by 100. So I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the right in the divisor. And I'm going to move it two places to the right in the dividend. So how many 325s can we take from 390? Just one. That's going to leave me with a remainder of 65. Well, let's add another zero and bring that down. How many 325s can I take from 650? Well, that's going to be double, right? So we get one and two tenths. For the height. Number eight, <clears throat> Amelia wants to paint three walls in her family room. Two walls are 26 feet by nine feet. The other wall is 18 feet by nine feet. What's the total area of the walls? Okay. So two walls plus the third wall, right? And we know area, the walls are rectangles. But this one is gonna be multiplied by two. Why is it multiplied by two? Because there's two walls that are exactly the same area. All right, so let's substitute what is known. So two of the walls are 26 by nine times two. So that's the formula for the area of the wall. We need to multiply by two because there's two walls that equal that. And in the other one, we have 18 by nine. Okay. So 26 times nine, 234. 234 times two, 468. square feet. And 18 times 9, 162 square feet. So we just need to add those together now. Six hundred and thirty square feet is the total area of the wall.
Now the gallons of paint that she's using cover 250 square feet. So how many gallons of paint will she need? Well, so now we're going to go 630. So the number of gallons equals 630 divided by 250. Two times 250 is 500. And that's going to leave me a remainder of 130. Well, that means two full gallons is not going to be enough. I need to account for the amount that's left over. So I'm going to say three gallons. Number nine, the area of a triangular block is 64 square inches. If the base of the triangle is twice the height, how long are the base and the height of the triangle? Well, let's see. One half, the base times the height, is the area of a triangle. So we know that the area is 64. So the base and the height, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both. I'm going to multiply the area by 2 because the base times the height is going to be double the area. So if I multiply 64 by 2, I'd get 128. So the base times the height has to be 128. Well, if 8 times 8 is 64, and the base is double, and then the base should be 16 times 8. 16 times 8 is 128. If you take half of 128, you get 64. Okay. So, let's see. Base, 16 inches, height, 8 inches. Number 10, Alex needs to varnish the top and bottom of a dozen rectangular boards. The boards are 8 feet long and three feet wide. Each pint of varnish covers 125 square feet and costs $3.50. What's the total area that Alex needs to varnish? Well, the rectangular boards. So rectangles equal length times width. They told me the boards are eight feet by three feet. So the area of each board is 24 feet. And it says he has a dozen of those. All right, so 24 times 12. So we get an area of 288 square feet for the 12 boards. But I noticed something in this question. It says top and the bottom. So this 288 square feet, that's just the top of all 12 boards. So I'm going to have to double that because we also have to do the bottom. So our total area is 576 square feet. Okay, and now we have to find out how much it's going to cost. Well, okay, so we have to take how many, basically how many pints of varnish do we need to buy? So 100, 576 divided by 125. Maybe four. 
125 times 4, 20, 10, 500 leaves us 76. Well, okay, so I can't just buy four pints of varnish because I have something left over here. So basically, if we look at it this way, we have four and 76, 125th pints of varnish we need. So the least I need to buy is five pints. So five pints at $3.50 a pint. So how much does it cost? N equals five times 350. So $17.50. Number 11, Leah cuts congruent triangular patches with an area of 45 square centimeters from a rectangular piece of fabric that is 18 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. How many of the patches can Leah cut from 32 pieces of the fabric? All right, so first we need to figure out <clears throat> the area of the rectangular piece of fabric. So we know rectangles are length times width. The length is 18 centimeters and the width is 10. So the area of every piece of fabric is 180 centimeters squared. Now, she's gonna cut 45 square centimeter pieces or triangles. So how many triangles can she get from every piece of fabric or rectangular piece of fabric? So 180 divided by 45. Okay, so four. She can get four triangles from every rectangular piece of fabric. And she has 32 pieces of fabric. Okay, so we're going to find out the number of or patches she can make from 32 rectangular pieces of fabric if she cuts four triangles from every piece. She should be able to get 128 patches. Okay, again, what did we do? We took the area of one rectangular piece. We divided by 45, because that's the size of the triangle pieces or patches she's making that she's cutting out. That means I can take get four 45 square centimeter pieces of patches from one rectangle, and there's 32 rectangles, so 32 times four. Right, number 12. A farmer needs to buy fertilizer for two fields. One field is shaped like a trapezoid, and the other is shaped like a triangle. The trapezoidal field has bases that are 35 and 48 yards and a height of 46 yards. The triangular field has the same height as the trapezoidal field and has a base of 39 yards. Each bag of fertilizer covers 150 square yards. How many bags of fertilizer does the farmer need to buy? Okay, so we've got a couple things we got to know here. First, we have a tra trapezoid. So we know that that is one half the height times the sum of the base one plus base two. We also know we have a triangular field. We know that that's going to be one half the base times the height. Now, what information were we given? We know the height of the trapezoid field is 20 six yards and we know that the bases are 35 
and 48. We know that the triangle field has the same height as the trapezoid, so the base is 39, so 1 half 39 times 26. Okay. So now we just need to figure out the area of both of those fields. So half of, well, first let's do the parentheses, 35 plus 48. It's going to give me 83. Half of 26 is 13. So 13 times 83. So the area of the trapezoid field is 1,079 square yards. And the area of the triangle field. Well, I like to take half of 26. So I'm going to rearrange that using the community of property multiplication. And half of 26 is 13, and 13 times 39. So the area of the trap is, uh, the triangular field is 570 square yards. So the total area is 1,079 plus 507. So we have 1,586 square yards is the total area. Each bag of fertilizer covers 150 square yards. So N, we need to find a number of bags of fertilizer that is needed to cover 1,586 square yards if one bag can cover 150 square yards. All right, well, I can get one set of 150s from 158, remainder of 8 that can't be shared with 150. Bring down the 6. I can't take any 150s from 86. So we have a remainder of 86. So I can't use um, just 10 bags. I wouldn't have enough. So I need to buy 11 bags for fertilizer. Thirteen. <clears throat> a tennis court for singles play is 78 feet and 27 feet wide. The court for doubles play is 9 feet wider than the court for singles play. How much more area is covered by the tennis court used for doubles play? All right, well, let's go ahead and figure out the singles court. So it's a rectangle, so we know it's length times width. So 78 times 27. All right, so the area of the singles court is 2,065 square feet. The court for doubles play is nine feet wider. Okay, so that's going to be area equals, again, length times width. The length stayed the same, and the width is nine feet wider. So 36, so 78 times 36. All right, so the area of the doubles court is 2,808 square feet. So how many more, 
how much more area is covered. 2,808 minus 2,065. 743 square feet more. Oh, no, that's that can't, that's not right, guys. I just noticed I multiplied incorrectly here. 8 times 7 is not... <laughs> weird things that your brain does to you sometimes. 8 times 7 is not 15. 8 times 7 is 56. Okay. 1 times 7 49, 54. So 6, 10... 2106 should have been the square feet of the singles court. Seven hundred and two square feet more. Okay, sorry about that. So the area of the singles court, well, I was, I was wrong. It should have been 2,106. The area of the larger, the doubles court is 2,808. So subtract those two and you're left with 702. All right. Now the court for the juniors court, players eight and under, is 36 feet long. Thirty six thirty six feet long and eighteen feet wide. How much more area is covered by the tennis court used for singles play? Okay, so thirty six times eighteen. Six hundred and forty eight square feet for the juniors. So Twenty one oh six take away six forty eight. All right. Fourteen hundred and fifty eight square feet. And C. The length of a court for players ten and under is eighteen feet less than the length for, of the court for singles play. So we're still using length times width. And our length this time is 18 feet less than the singles court. Well, 78 minus 18 is 60. And the width stays the same at 27. So the area of the ju junior's court is 60 times 27. So their court is 1,620 square feet. So how much more is covered by the tennis court used for singles play? So 2,106 minus 1,620. 486 square feet more. All right, 14. <clears throat> the cross section of a metal ingot is a trapezoid. The cross section has an area of 39 square centimeters. The top base is 12 centimeters. The length of the bottom base is 2 centimeters greater than the top base. How tall is the metal ingot? Explain. All right, so the height of the ingot. the height of the cross section.
So we use the equation 39. That's the, the area of the trapezoid's cross section. One half the height times the bases of 12 and 14 will help us figure out the height. Okay, so half of 26 is 13, so we get 39 equals 13 times the height. How did I get 13? Well, 12 and 20, 14 is 26. Half of 26 is 13, so 13 times h. Divide both sides by 13, we get a height of 3 centimeters. Okay, 15A. So let's see, a mirror is made of two congruent parallelograms as shown in the diagram. The par parallelograms have a combined area of nine and one three square yards. So nine and a third square yards. The height of each paragram, par parallelogram is one and one third yards. How long is the base of each parallelogram? Okay, so on this one, we're going to use the area of a parallelogram. And so we have base times height. They told us the, com the combined area of the two parallelograms is nine and one third. So what we have to do first is figure out the area of just one of them, right? So let's figure out the area of one parallelogram. Nine and one thirds, I can change that to 28 thirds. Okay. I'm going to divide that by two. Well, 28 thirds divided by two is the same as multiplying by one half. Which would give me four and two thirds. Okay. 4 times 6 is 24 with a remainder of 4. That means the mixed number would be 4 and 4 sixths, which I can reduce to 4 and 2 thirds. So that's the area of one parallelogram. So 4 and 2 thirds equals base times 1 and 1 third. Okay, I'm going to turn both of these back into fractions greater than 1. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 more is 14, so 14 thirds equals 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 more is 4, so 4 thirds times the base. Well, I see that we're multiplying 4 thirds times the base, which means I would need to divide by 4 thirds, but dividing by 4 thirds is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 4 thirds. So on one side of the equation, we're left with B. Here we can reduce, eliminate the threes. I can simplify both of those by dividing by two. So we get seven halves. And seven divided by two is the same as three and a half. So the base of each parallelogram is three and a half yards. What is the area of the smallest rectangle of wall that the mirror could fit on? All right. So if the base of the parallelogram is four is three and a half, to make the smallest rectangle, if we add another yard to it, 
we'd have a width of, say, 4. And we know the height is 1 and 1 third yards. So we can take 1 and 1 third, or 4 thirds, times 4. So 4 thirds is the same as 1 and 1 third. We added a half yard to the base to get 4, and we just need to multiply those together to figure out the base of the area of one of the rectangular mirrors, of, of the re rectangular piece of that wall. So 4 over 1, 16 thirds, 16 divided by 3 is 5 and 1 thirds. Okay. So that's for one part of the parallelogram mirror. So we just need to double that. Five and one thirds plus five and one thirds would give me 10 and two thirds square yards would be the smallest rectangle of wall. Okay, so again, if we call this three and a half plus the half, that would give us four. And this piece here is one and one third. So if we consider this the width, one and one third, this the height, the height would be four, four times one and one third. And then we do the same thing to the other side. So that's why we doubled it to 10 and 2 thirds. And number 16, a watercolor painting is 20 inches long by 9 inches wide. Okay, so that's the wide area in here. Ramon makes a border around the watercolor painting by making a mat that adds 1 inch to each side of the length and the width. Okay, so if we added one inch to the nine right we'd have plus one here and we'd also have plus one down here top and bottom right to each side so with the mat it would be 11 inches i'm going to write math with mat area with mat would be 11 inches and 20 inches if we add an inch this way and an inch this and an inch this way that would be a length of 22 so multiply 22 times 11 so with the mat the area is 242 square inches but we just want to find the area of the mat. So what is the picture? The picture length times width is 9 times 20, which is 180. So the picture plus the mat is 242. So what's the mat? The mat equals 242 minus the area of the picture. Sixty-two. Sixty-two square inches. All right, so that's it for module 13.3. So until our next lesson, I will see you soon.